I hope you guys are doing well out there. I'm not sure how you feel, pretty sure by now a lot of you have heard about the news regarding the topic announcement for GCSEs and A-levels for your upcoming exams in the summer of 2022. I've managed to have a glance myself at the various different subjects and overall guys, I seem to think that, you know what, they've lived up to the billing, they have stipulated which topics will be coming up in the exams. So I'm not sure whether you've managed to have a look yourself or whether your teachers have informed you about it. But if you haven't, there's a link down below. I've outlined the various different subjects where you can go and check that out and see for yourself. Now, based on that, what do you guys think? Do you guys feel as though this has lived up to your expectations? Kind of like now reduce that pressure that you know you guys were under. Will it help with the revision? You know, overall, do you see yourselves doing better than without it? I think that's that's a key question there. So let me know down below what you think and let's make this into a community where we can share our thoughts and opinions about these things. Go down below and see what everyone thinks. Now, what I'm gonna do for the sake of this video is I'm going to start off by talking about the advantages. I'm not gonna go into the ins and outs of all the different subjects. Like I say, you can go and check that out for yourself and there's just far too many subjects to list in one video. Overall, the vast majority of subjects have obviously had some sort of topic list provided for what's going to be coming up in the various papers. It does vary from subject to subject, but overall, I personally believe that, look, this is a handout, a freebie. And that I know for a fact that previous years, including myself who sat these exams long, yeah, so having sat these exams in the prehistoric civilization era, I know for a fact that I would have welcomed this hands down, you know what I mean, as I'm sure many other students would have. I personally feel as though it helps all students, you know, GCSEs and A-levels, but in particular, I personally think it really helps the A-level students a lot more. Purely because of the fact that the A-level specification is very, very broad and there's a lot of content to be covered over the span of these two years. You know, I can only go by when I was revising, there's just a lot of content and not knowing what's going to come up doesn't exactly ease that burden. So now that you do know what's coming up with the differing subjects, this will sort of lighten that burden if, of course, if you utilize this properly. The other advantage to it is that with some of the subjects like GCSE Sciences and even A-level Chemistry, Bio and Physics, usually there are these practicals that you will have to undertake year in year out. I know for GCSEs they're not mandatory, although it's still advisable, but at A-level you are usually required to conduct all 12 practicals throughout the course of the two years. But this year, you have been told that there is no requirement or there's a minimum number of practicals that you need to conduct and this is at the discretion of your teachers. So that's another plus point or is it really because you guys still are going to be tested on the practicals within the exam papers itself. Usually, like as I just mentioned, there's 12 practicals and any of those 12 practicals can come up in the different papers and they haven't outlined which ones will be coming up. So even though you can get away with conducting the minimum level of practicals, you still don't know which of the 12 practicals will be coming up with the exam at the end of the day these questions these practical questions constitute up to 15 percent for both gcse and a levels it's still a i would say it's still a significant number now the major advantage that i would say for you guys this year is that they have already outlined this year's gradings will be a lot more generous than the previous years before that and what i mean by that is the last time exams took place all the way back in 2019 the grade barriers for this year will be higher than that of 2019. So that's another plus point. There'll be a lot more people getting grade A stars, grade A's, maybe not as much as last year with the teacher assessed grades, but we all knew that that was gonna be a lot more because different places doing different things. But when it comes to exams, this will be the most generous year so far when it comes to actually sitting exams. So I personally think, you know, we'll have another successful year again, if everybody obviously puts in the effort. So when it comes to the disadvantage Advantages. What are the disadvantages? I mean, personally, I don't really see a lot of disadvantages to any of this purely because of the fact that unless, you know, some of you are going to be complaining about, you know, they could have done more or they could have specified. I know for certain subjects like English Literature, GCSE, they haven't really done anything other than the fact that they're giving you more options. But that in and of itself is, is a plus point. Do you know what I mean? You're getting more options rather than being told what's coming up. With regards to 
GCSE English, other than the fact that they've outlined that you'll have an autobiographical piece and an essay from, from the 19th century and being told that you're going to write an article. Does that really change the game? It doesn't really. You're still going to have to practice things. It's still a hint and even just having that can be a, more of a, a mental thing than anything. So I personally think that the other thing that some of you may have suggested is to kind of like start chopping and chipping the specifications but that would create a huge level of disparity up and down the country because not many places follow the curriculum in a linear fashion. I personally feel as though they've lived up to the billing, they've done what they've said they're going to do and now it allows everyone to kind of just focus on that. We're in February, go until May to kind of like start focusing on these different aspects and kind of like just knuckling down on these things. And I think it will work out in the vast majority of people's favours if you go up to follow that because I know there will be some people that, that just won't and it'll be at their detriment. So hopefully you guys won't be one of those guys. But on that note guys as well, I've been doing some background work which you guys may not have seen but I'm going to be putting out some more content geared towards some of your subjects that you'll be undertaking you can go and check out the updates on instagram and also make sure to get subscribed to this channel as well so on that note guys my name is amin and i will catch up with you another time